I noticed that when I turned off the layer that was underneath and I could see a hint of checkerboard coming through uh, here. And so we might need to modify this. And so I want to give you a few tips. Now you could always grab your paintbrush tool and just come over here and manually paint. So if I came over here and painted with white, I could just clean this up. The problem with that is when you get near the edges, if I need to clean it up, let's say in his arm over here, I need to be very precise then. And if I need to get right up to the edge, I can very easily go too far, especially if I have a soft edge brush. And I get over here, suddenly it can look like I'm going a little bit beyond. And I don't know if you can see it right here. Do you see it like almost a little glow around this? And also right there. I'll choose undo a few times to uh, get that back. So I want to show you some tricks that will make it so you can clean up masks much faster than you might normally be used to. I'm going to be painting with white. I'm in the standard paintbrush tool, the same thing you use for painting in any situation. But I'm going to customize the settings that appear across the top of my screen. I'm going to first change this menu called the blending mode. And I'm going to choose a choice that's called hard mix. Hard mix is rarely used, but is overly useful in this particular case. That little menu, known as the blending mode menu, changes the way my brush interacts with whatever it would usually paint on. For instance, if I were to choose the choice in here called darken, it would only be able to darken what I paint on. And if it would usually brighten it up, because I'm painting with white or something, it just wouldn't affect the image at all. This menu would prevent it from being able to lighten anything when it's set to the choice called Darken. Hard Mix is special though, and let's see if we can figure out a little bit about what it does. I got my brush here, I'm painting with white, and I'm just going to paint. And you see how I can get things to be white, just like before. But watch what happens when I overlap the background where it's black. Notice that in general, it's leaving the background alone, except for in one spot at the bottom of my photo. I'll choose undo. The only problem with it is it's usually too aggressive. In this particular case, it might not be bad, but in a lot of images, like if we start working on hair, you'll find that it's too aggressive. Instead of letting the hair suddenly show up more in the mask or something, it's blatant, going all the way to solid white very quickly. But the main thing to know is that this, when we're working on a mask, will protect the opposite color as what we're painting with. If we're painting with white, it's going to protect black. So I can't change the areas that are already black. And that makes it much easier to be able to come in here and just paint over these things and not have to worry about being precise because you, if you get overlay and overlap onto the background, it's protecting things that are solid black. But it's only protecting things that are solid black. If there are any shades of gray, like can you see down here, if I zoom up a little bit, that I can see a hint of old clouds or something within this. That's not truly black right here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, and so it's only going to protect solid black. So when I get over that area, look what happens. It can get into it. I'm going to choose undo though. I find this is usually too aggressive though and if there's any little hint that's a little bit brighter than black, it starts changing it too much. So what I usually do is I change the opacity setting at the top of my screen and I bring it down to about 20%, 20 to 30 usually, but I vary it. One way of changing the opacity is to just hit the number keys on your keyboard. That takes whatever tool you're working on and if it has an opacity setting attached to it, changes it. So if I hit 2, it goes to 20. Hit 5, it goes to 50. Hit 0, it goes all the way up to 100. You can actually get 0. Just type 0 twice. Oh, it can't on this one. But usually like on a layer or something, you could type 0, 0 and it would go to 0. But I'm going to bring that down to 20. And now let's see if it's any less aggressive when it comes to that background. Yeah, you see barely changing the sky, that hint of sky. 
And so I find when it's at 20 or 30 percent, then I can still go over an area like this, and it's not going to change the clouds that are showing up a little bit in that background quite as much, and so it's, it's not as problematic. But now here's what's cool about it, even more cool than that to start with, <laughs> and that is if I change the color I'm painting with down here, with these little double arrows, so I'm painting with black. Now it's going to protect the opposite of black, which means it's going to protect the white areas. So if I want to clean up this area where I can see little hints of, of clouds, now I can go in there and do it, and I don't really have to be concerned with getting overspray onto the white areas.